All right, welcome to the briefing video for the group assignment. First thing of note is those of you who undertook the second or third topic in the solo project, welcome to the PWX data set. Now, to start, I just want to clarify the difference between the solo project and the group project with regards to the PWX data. In the solo project, you were allowed to look to the future. The data set you're working to is from 2005 and one of your instructions in the solo project if you're working on the PWX data set was to address anything that may have changed, may have been discovered from 2005 to uh, the submission of the assignment, so 2012, which would negate sections of the assignment. Now for the group project because you are provided the data set, you are effectively being given a case study. Now the data is real life from 2005 and it's time capped at 2005. You cannot now go out and update key sections of the data sets by reference to contemporary material, contemporary content. This means uh, in no short order, one, you do not have to change the ages of the respondents. For the purposes of this exercise, you may keep them as their 2005 age bracket. So someone born in 1973 gets to be the, you don't have to recalculate the age. Second thing is that you're being asked to make a set of decisions on the data set and the content within the data set it does not matter what has taken place in reality since 2005. You are not being judged on your ability to go out and find an existing organization and seeing what they've done. You're being judged on your ability to take raw data, analyze it, interpret it, and then write up a set of responses. So it doesn't matter what PWX got up to after that data set. It matters what you used to advise them to do. And there are no marks for the actual right or wrong aspect here. There's no, if you say green or you say red, you'll get more marks for green than you will for red. You will get marks for how well you justify and explain yourself. So that's the overall principle. Uh, you can't, based, the other area where you can't do an update is you cannot update the list of Canadian wrestlers that's in the open-ended data. But I do need you to be aware that between 2005 and now, several of the wrestlers who are named in that set have died because wrestling is one of those things where there's actually a reasonably high mortality rate. And look, just for the sake of argument, let's just knock Chris Benoit out of the framework as an acceptable endorser. Don't necessarily want to explain why, but I think probably one quick trip to Wikipedia will let you see why. So pick someone other than him, okay? even if he does score really well on the objective measures. That's the only point where 2005 and 2012 are going to uh, meet is that when you are making a recommendation about who would be a good endorser, if there is a good endorser, you might want to take pay attention to what's actually happened with this person. Like, are they still around here to endorse? Okay, so the rest of this video is going to be a discussion of the component elements of the assessment task. Which means if you pretty much nailed out one section, you might get a little bit bored, you might need to skip ahead, so good luck with that. First thing is, this is one of the pieces of additional information I was gonna provide you. I said I'd give you another document, uh, that's the survival guide, which I'm currently still working on and finalizing. I uh, really appreciate everyone who's come to see me and everyone sent me emails asking me questions because that's how I write these guides and how I write these uh, additional support materials is I take the questions I've been asked by students who have come to see me in consultation and pretty much develop a frequently asked questions approach. Yes, I'm from the internet. Uh, you might have gathered that by the stuff over my shoulder. Second thing with the survival guide is that you already have 
two documents in play. Group Assignment Topic Final Version 2, Group Assignment Guides Draft 1. This third document that's going to come out, the Survival Guide, is the third in the series. Uh, it will over if it overwrites anything, it's the most recent version, so you'll have updates and clarifications. But you still need to have looked at the other two. They will help you a lot. And I think you'll find the Group Assignment Guides Draft 1 to be particularly useful. The other two things I just want to say is that uh, there won't be an extension. Short of an act of um, Moodle or an act of Wattle, I want this thing over and done with. Um, I launched it back in week two week three. It's been around for a while and I just like to see this semester end. Uh, I can't speak for you, I can speak for me. I will be really pleased to meet week 13. I will be on standing up between 2 and 4 p.m. on Friday week 13. I am the last lecture pretty much scheduled on this campus. So I'm going to be kind of keen to see this whole thing knocked out and over and done with. So, I should probably hold up placards and you know, cards and say which section's which. Section zero, basic reporting requirements. Okay. The principle of this section is I want you to be able to run some really simple statistics, to run some very, very basic uh, descriptives, frequencies, and to report on the whole of the data set. So this is the summary overview. The context that I want you to use is that Everything in this assignment is heading back to answer the same management question. And that management question, which is question six in the block, is will the success of the PWX product be influenced by the geographic location of the firm? So, when you are reporting in the basic reporting requirements, you're going to need to be thinking in terms of how does this data set help answer that question. So, phrase your response, phrase your answer here. This is the first of the parts of your answer. You're going to talk about the constitution of the data sets, the demography, geography, psychography, and the behavioral intention toward the product. Think about the reporting in terms of how does this help the managers of the project answer the question, how will our success be determined? Uh, the requirement for external references, which again is still on in this document. Here, what I'm looking at is I'm wanting people to be able to be very deliberate in the decisions and then basically explain to me in one or two sentences with a reference why they ran the analysis that they ran. This project requires you to show your working. And to show you're working by reference, citation, and to indicate to me that your decisions were deliberate. And the best way to do that is to use a reference and a citation to say, this was a deliberate act. I know what I was doing and why I was doing it. The only other thing I will say on this is... When you start looking at the basic reporting requirements, uh, you can use tables, obviously. A lot of the data that you're going to produce here will be well reported in charts, tables and figures. I want you to be really smart about how you use these tables. Do not just copy and paste directly out of the SPSS output for the tables. Think through. Think how would you represent this material? What's the best way to represent this material? So, the other thing I will point out is that the variables that are useful, gender, year, birth, live, fan, that's the ones I think. But there are other variables in there and there's even the qualitative variables. The open one to six you could go and have a look at and say, is there anything in there that's you know, worth describing?
All right. Business decision questions time now. The way the assessment task is set up is that there are five decision questions and that leads into the sixth, question six, which is the management question. For those of you in groups who divided this up, whoever draws the management question, you are going to be dependent on your teammates for their answers, questions one to five, before you can answer question six. So just a little heads up on that, be, be smart about this. Now I'm going to ask you for three requirements in the business decision questions and I'm just going to briefly outline those. That is, show you're working, use your references, tell me why you are undertaking the behaviour you are undertaking with a citation and get points for it. Two, use the data set. No updating, no fudging, no messing around, no grabbing stuff from elsewhere, no going off and collecting your own data. Just work with it. Uh, but the use of the data set is also very specific and we'll be explaining a little bit how that works as well. Finally, answer the questions. Now this, if there's a secret to this assessment task, it's the fact that it's not a statistics assessment. It's a marketing task. So don't just think stats output and stats analysis and dropping that on the page answers the question. No, it doesn't. Answer the actual question. Each thing's got a question mark. Give me an answer. Twofold training happening here. Number one, back at the tutorial kids, we taught you to answer questions. We trained you to do this. Two, I'm going to have you sitting in an exam room answering a question. Uh, three elements are connected. Your training here is going to help you in the exam room. All right, step-by-step -step guide. And the long pauses are to actually give a visual indicator on the SoundCloud page. Question one. So the question here is, what are the most common themes within country of origin effect theory which basically requires you to go out and do secondary research. It requires you to go out and actually undertake a research into the topic area of country of origin effect and come up with a brief summary of or basically a brief literature review. Now that literature review needs to do more than just tell me what the uh, themes are. It has to tell me what the themes are but it also has to answer the second part of the question, which is how can these themes be used to inform the PWX management of the possible benefits or problems of emphasising the Canadian development origins? So the challenge here in question one is that you have to understand country of origin effect and report back as a what are the managerial impacts of this framework, this concept, this idea. Now, first thing is, you know, the rule that you're going to hear frequently in this video is think like a marketer. Where can you use country of origin effect? Where are you going to use it in the marketing mix? How are you going to make use of this? Does it fit with the extended product? Does it fit into promotion? Is it a price to be overcome? Is it a distribution? issue. How does it work? Give me the summary of what the themes are, give me the application of how the themes can impact on management decisions. Now as far as, look, this is the external reference playground. This is where you're going to have your best chance to use external references of anywhere in the entire subject because obviously I'm asking you to go out and research different theories. Do not copy and paste stuff. Do not copy and paste chunks of text from the internet in here and hope to answer this and survive. One, it's plagiarism. Two, it's artless. Three, it's tacky. Seriously. And four, it won't actually answer the question. The question is, how can these themes be used by PWX? 
So you've got to know what the themes are and then you've got to tell me how you're going to use them. Remembering as well here that this is a report. You don't have to answer the questions in linear sequence. What you can do is go out, find out all the country of origin effect theory, get your theme base together, then answer a bunch of the other questions, then come back and say, hey look, there's some stuff in the data set that makes themes 4, 7 and 12 really useful. Let's emphasize those. So nonlinearity is fine. Marketing research is, you know, a lot of people try and pretend it's like nice and linear, but it's really sort of a big ball of, you know, market researchy stuff. The two hints I will give you for um, the what to do with question one. Hint number one is summarize, draw the themes together. And hint number two is don't forget to tell me how you plan on doing it. Show your working applies to this section. So tell me how you, give me a two sentence, how you're going to run your uh, research here. Go off, do it, bring back the themes, integrate the themes into the management decision. Alright, question two. This is going to be an interesting question because there are sub-questions to it. All four sub-questions are important and you have to address all four sub-questions. So, I'll read the questions out, then let's, then you get to listen to me talking about it. What is the level of perceived Canadian influence in the wrestling, in wrestling according to the sample? What are the attitudes of pro wrestling fans to non-American wrestling? Are Canadian wrestlers recognisable to an international audience? Are there any major candidates to consider for celebrity endorsement of the product? All right, from the top, first thing it's first. You can't modify open one and open two. These are, and I will speak in terms of variable names because it's my data set and I know the variables and you're actually, uh, you'll get used to them as you analyze them. Okay, first thing I want to say is that the Canadian wrestlers recognizable to an international audience. Obviously there is a, uh, there are two questions on the survey. One is name female res Canadian wrestlers. The other is name male Canadian wrestlers. Right, so that's step one. That if you're not nailing that bit, uh, the closest thing to a trick in this uh, really is that you are now into having to do analysis. You're actually having to run some uh, statistics in here. Now, this is what I want to talk to you about. Is I'm going to teach you the methods. I'm going to tell you about correlations. I'm going to tell you t-tests, frequencies, descriptives. This is why you have the requirement of the show you're working, is that you've got to pick what you want to use and say why you're using it. Now, in terms of perceived Canadian influence in wrestling, there are questions that answer that directly, uh, and I'm quite happy to mention them to you, because that's talking about credibility, uh, and the two variables are cred and association, ASOC. If you're using the large PWX data set, you'll find that the credibility questions cover quite a wide range of nations. If you're using the cut down uh, data set, I did reduce that number of uh, variables you've got in there. Now what you need to do to answer this question is you've got to give me a report about perceived Canadian influence. So you've got to analyze the questions that talk about Canada and wrestling. Then, the attitudes of pro wrestling fans to non-American wrestling. This is where you get to make some decisions. How do you want to treat non-American wrestling in the data set? There are individual items. You can create a scale, a sum to total. You can look for a mean average of 
you know, American wrestling, non-American wrestling, your choice. Just tell me why you're going to do it and how you're going to do it. And then do it. And then actually give me an answer here. So what's, you know, what's the level? How would you describe the level? And think about, you know, what's the best way to present this data? Is it, you know, graphically? Is it visually? Is it an infographic? What is the best way to answer this? And, you know, continue to use your word count. Uh, the third, fourth point, there is a little uh, caveat that you should consider is, are Canadian wrestlers recognizable to an international audience? And the hint here is an international audience is an audience that doesn't consist of Canadians. So you're going to have to do a little bit of manipulation with the data set and take the Canadians out of the data set temporarily. Because you don't want to be answering what Canadians think about Canadian wrestlers, do you? Now to do that, there's some um, stuff that, uh, in the tutorials that we taught you how to do selecting of cases and how to create variables. Uh, that, will, that is actually, that um, piece of information is up on the Waddle, so go find that, go track that down. In terms of the external references for this section, again, you're looking at talking about what decisions are you making, what analysis are you running, how are you running it so that you are justifying those decisions? Question three. All right, this is again another set of analysis coming up here. Now, question three links to question one. Question one asked you to talk about the themes in country of origin effect. Question three is talking about does the Canadian country brand influence perceptions of wrestling products? Then you have to make a decision. Is it a beneficial or harmful influence? Does the data suggest that you should play up the Canadian side, or does the data suggest that you should play down the Canadian aspect? Then the third part of this question, the third element here is, what are the attitudes towards professional wrestling games and software based on the country of development of the software with reference towards Canadian software? I mean, let's face it, this is the most blunt asked question you are going to see. This is the, it's not completely the management question, but it's a big, big chunk of it. So whoever's got question three, if you haven't got question six, you might want to look at a trade here. Now, again, all right, you're looking for relationships. You're looking for a question of what is the influence? How do we measure influence? So you need to tell me how you're going to measure influence. You're going to justify why you're using those measures of influence. And then you're actually going to also give me an answer. And that is, if I do not see either word, you're either going to say Canadian influence is beneficial or Canadian influence is harmful. This is a green light, red light. This is a green card, red card situation. You have to say one or the other. So you have to make that call. For those of you who like to be neutral, tough. The attitudes towards, uh, the basically attitudes with reference to Canadian software. Okay, there's two other, there's two things here. One is that there are questions in the quantitative data that directly answer this. So you've got quantitative analysis that you can use to hit up that third question. And you can read the third, you can read the questions in the open-ended, particularly open six, which talks where I said, you know, any questions, any statements, an open-ended question, and people talk about Canadian software. And the points get scored here by 
how you answer, how you explain what you're going to do, and what you tell us in terms of giving us a green light, red light, giving us saying, yes, this is beneficial, no, it's harmful, these are the attitudes, this is how it's uh, panning out in this data set. So you've got a whole lot of choices you can work with here. Uh, this is not the biggest of the questions in terms of its open-ended nature, but you do have a lot of, you have an opportunity here to be creative, to be smart about your data and to do interesting things. So again, the areas I recommend is I think the variables of credibility, cred, rest, association, tradition, origin, and the open-ended six. A lot of interesting stuff to be done in there. So again, that's why I'd say start. But also, don't forget to go back to question one and look for those elements that you can take from question one, the what are the themes of country of origin effect, to the practical question of what does the Canadian country brand do? So this is why you asked to do question one, is because question three depends on those principles. And if at this point you haven't figured out how we're going to pull off the external references section, I'm not talking to you. I'm not telling you that. All right, question four. What level of demand exists for PC gaming, PC wrestling games amongst this audience? I'm gonna just stop and define a parameter here. This audience is the sample, right? It's a representative sample. It's the sourcing of the sample, it came from an online survey of PWX subscribers, people who had been subscribing to the Pro Wrestling X mailing list for updates about the product. It was also uh, taken from bolstered half the. Gets right. There were about 1,700 people on the survey mailing list. Um, I think about 170, maybe 200 of our responses came from the PWX list, so we got about a 10% response rate there. We also, now oh, the fact I can talk collectively about this, went out to professional wrestling online communities. Uh, it's 2005, so there's no Facebook, there's no Twitter, there's, okay, we don't talk about it, but there was MySpace. Main place we were rated was we went out to LiveJournal. If you're not familiar with LiveJournal, it's it's okay. Uh, there were a series of wrestling communities on LiveJournal that we posted up messages and got their community moderators to endorse us and say, look, yeah, fill out this survey. And we also grabbed uh, some endorsement from a few wrestling fan sites that actually put links to our stuff out there saying, we're, so we've got a mixture of wrestling fans and PWX fans. We'll casually say our response rate was to about 10% uh, for the PWX mailing list, probably about seven, maybe eight percent for the um, general community, which would be about standard for an unsolicited online survey in that era. I promise I will actually publish the full details of that online at some point. Now, so the level of demand for this audience, this audience being the data set, now are you down there? So, First thing is you've got a, two distinct variables in there to go and work with, um, that's PC1 and PC2. What you're going to score points for is how you explain the level of demand, your analysis of it, and your justification of it. So that's part one of question four. Part two, identify two primary market segments with the strongest interest in a PC wrestling game. Identify then, having done that, identify the wrestling interests of the two market segments and then which is the best segment to pick as a primary target market. Now, question four builds 
on work you have completed elsewhere in this paper. So question four, and look, I know the groups are splitting it up, and you take one, I'll take three, you take four. So, whoever's got question four, you have to run this analysis. you got to do this work. But you also have the opportunity to check in with the people who've done question two and say, uh, look, what, what's the attitude about non-American wrestling here? You know, what's the general, what is the general population of this sample? What do they feel? You then also can go check in with question three, uh, you know, how's Canada felt, you know, what's the attitude towards Canada across the whole of the sample? Because your challenge here in question four is that you get to make a marketing segment. You actually get to do segmentation. And all the way through in, if you do any of the marketing subjects, we'll say, pick a market segment. Well, we usually just sort of hand wave to them, you know. Well, naturally you'd pick a narrow target market, wave, wave, and don't actually make you do it. This time, I'm making you do this. So, my advice is, first thing is, look at the P, uh, PC1, PC2. Look at the level of demand that exists. Then start saying, well, okay, how do I create another variable? What sort of variable would be useful to create here? And then look at it from the perspective of, how do I go and start slicing up this data set. And to do that, you want to be looking at things like uh, filtering the data set, or maybe creating new variables, maybe creating compound, stuff that you, this, we've done some tutorial exercises on. But there's two, I think two secrets in here to making this really entertaining for you and really fun. I think secret number one is making the call actually feeling, you know, feeling confident that you can make a decision. There will be no marks criteria sitting around the place saying the perfect market segment, because that's not how business works, that's not how life works. Pick two segments that you think are good to go and then describe them, which means you also want to go back and look at the, uh, you know, question zero, basic reporting requirements, Give us the breakdown, give us the geography, their demography, their uh, age, identifying characteristics, what's their psychographic profile. Because you're asking as well here is, what are the, t what are the wrestling interests of the two segments? And we've got variables that cover that. In that, like I said, go look at that full data set and look at the variables. But also, look at the qualitative. When you've picked your segments, Go to Open6 and look at, run a frequency on Open6 with just the variables, just the people you want in there, and then look at the quotes that they've provided. What have they said in there that's just going to be like the money quote, the quote that makes it work, the quote that just defines this group? What's in there? Similarly, if you want to actually do this without doing the quant first, Go to the data set in Open6. You can either do this inside SPSS or using the Word document. And then go through and say, who's look at that qualitative data and say, is there enough here for me to go and pick a group of people and say, these people, these are my starting segments. What are their breakdowns? What are their, you know, what are their identifying marks? How many more of them are there in the population? So you can go one of two ways. You can either start at the quant side and come out to qual as your sort of exemplar highlight, or start the qual side and identify market opportunities. Say, so, look, these are people who are really excited about the game. Let's, what commonality do they have? Well, they're similar ages, age blocks. Let's go have a look, what's in here? So again, your options there. I'm being really open-ended on this because this is huge fun. I, look, a lot of you are gonna stress out about this and I can't stop you doing that. But this is your Lego blocks. This is your opportunity. Uh, if you didn't play with Lego, or you hate Lego, pick something you like. It's your Bedazzler set. Um, it's your ingredients. It's your opportunity to go whip up an amazing looking uh, cake out of component parts. It is your opportunity to build, to create. You have
have a live real world data set and you can select in this how you would do a market segment. Now that is going to be fun because you've been being taught how to do segments since intro to marketing. Now you actually get to do one. So huge fun to be had here. A lot of things, a uh, lot of opportunity, a lot of different ways you can handle it. Oh, just um, one other thing. You've got to pick one of the two of them. You have to tell me which is the best, which is going to be your primary target market. That means you've got to favor one of your two audiences. You've got to give me two viable audiences, then pick one that you would target first. And that is a marketing activity. And everything you are going to feel, every emotion, every frustration, every, I don't know how to do this, oh, what am I doing, why am I doing this, who am I to make this decision, it's a simulation exercise and we are currently going to simulate what you'll go through doing your target market selection when you get to be a marketer. Question five. All right. Okay, question five. How does the audience, how does the sample audience feel about PWX and the game concept? What are common themes in the feedback? Can these elements be incorporated into future marketing communication efforts? There is a quantitative element, there is a qualitative element. Now, common themes in the feedback, yes, this is the qualitative qual analysis. This is week 10's practice in the labs and discussion in the lecture theatre. Basically, what you are doing here is that you are effectively doing a literature review where you've got a finite block of literature and that's all the content in Open 6. What you also have is, in terms of the game concept and feeling about the game, is you do have a couple of quant uh, measures about PWX itself that you can go and use and make use of that. Uh, in terms of the challenge. Now, again, trying to put the external references in here, challenge number one is going to be about maintaining your, your focus in the data set. So, what are the themes out of here? Uh, obviously, you can use your methodology, uh, you, know, you get your references for your methodology approach of saying, well, I conduct a, con a content analysis through, you know, pick your method, pick your style, pick your approach. But also, the third part of this question, the part that I think a lot of you are going to try to skip because, you know, decisions. Can these elements be incorporated into future marketing communications efforts? Well, you can reference marketing communication efforts, can't you? You can reference that part of the marketing mix. You've got an advertising subject at this university. There are advertising textbooks. You can pop across to UC. They've got advertising books. You can grab a little bit of IMC theory to throw in to be your reference here. Also, once you've gone through those themes, the question is, can these elements be incorporated? You can say yes, you can say no. You can support, you can argue a case for using this, or you can argue a case for dismissing this. So, think about this. The other thing I'll tell you now is just make certain you're covering the whole of the sample audience, not just your target markets. Uh, if you are starting to do things in terms of you know, some of the fun bits where you go and filter your audience down or you create little sub selected categories. Just make certain you're looking at the whole case when you're doing question five. Question six, the management question, the concluding part. Will the success of PWX product be influenced by the geographic location of the firm. Provide a summary answer, 300 to 500 words, that addresses this question with reference to your own analysis and any appropriate secondary sources. 
Now the category any appropriate secondary sources is question one. Please link the start with the finish. Two, this is a judgment call. This is a value judgment call. This is where you go and say, uh, based on the analysis in this report, PWX will be influenced, PWX won't be influenced. You are going to say, one way or the other, is there an influence? Will it make a difference? If you don't, you don't score very well. If you do, you do score very well. It's that sort of simple. You are summarizing, concluding, and reporting. You are answering the question, does the geography matter? Bonus if you can actually point out what impact it would have on your chosen primary target market. Bonus. Because then I know you're really a good marketer. So the management question, this is the reason you're analyzing this whole thing. The first five questions lead you up to being able to answer this to say, hey, does geography have an impact? So you close out on that. Other notes, uh, elements of interest. Okay. In terms of what I'm looking for, visually, layout, presentation, everything else here, uh, prettiness mode is enabled. I know some of you got really quite thrown by the stark, blunt and brutal um, solo assignment requirement of just answer the question, get in there, start on question one, finish on question six. For this round, you can have executive summaries, tables of contents, it can be in PDF files, it can be pretty, it can be graphical, and it can also be every bit as blunt as solo. There are no points on offer for pretty, there are no points on offer for fabulous, because I expect you to just be fabulous anyway, but there are no points to be won or lost by having topping and tailing um, of exec summaries and tables of contents and the only rule that is in absolute strict effect is no appendices. The reason why the no appendices rule is in place is that what students, what you would do, and let's be honest about this, what I would do is I would go and run my analysis and I'd bundle up into a little appendix which would be about 80 to 200 pages long and stick that on the end of my tiny little 3,000 word assignment. No. No, you don't get to do that. No appendices. What you do have to do is also be smart about how you report your data and your output from SPSS. I will, in the survival guide, be mentioning how to report results from different categories. I do not want to see a t-test output table. I do not want to see a correlation output table that has just been copied and dumped straight in. I want you to think what information from this output file matters. What counts, what should be in there. And that's the whole thing about this subject. This is the last, pre the exam, this is the last essay opportunity for you to show me that you think, that you think like a marketer and that you are a marketer. This is your apprenticeship. Yeah. The other thing about this particular assignment task is you learn as you do this. You don't know everything you need to know when you start this. You learn some of it on the way. It is on the job training. You are going to become more comfortable with SPSS as you move through the assessment. You start with something nice and comfortable like descriptives and frequencies and then you head down to do a quick t-test and then you get into a correlation and then you're looking and saying, whoa, whoa, what about, and then you've got the options. Now, the other thing is for those of you who speak MATLAB or uh, any other stats package, fair game, you can use them. SPSS is what I speak, SPSS is what I'm training you, but if you speak another stat package, do it, use it, make it your own. Because it's the results as you interpret them that matter. And that's the key to this assignment. 
Interpretation is what matters. It's not about reporting output from SPSS. It's not about copying and pasting elements from other sources. It's about your interpretation. And that is what I'm training you to do. You're getting the practice. You've had the practice in solo. You've had the practice in the tutorial kits. You are now having one more time to showcase your skill and ability. So, I believe in you. You've shown yourselves to be a really good crew. You're sharp, you're smart, you're terrified. That wasn't what I set out to do, but if that's what you know, gets you through the course and gets things done, fine, be afraid. But just remember, there are no monsters in this subject. This is not designed to trick you. This is not here to test your ability to second guess me. This is here for you to showcase your skills, to demonstrate your analytical abilities, to run, to pick up a data set, to run with it, to use it as a resource, answer a set of questions, and then produce a report. That's it, 3,000 words, short, sharp, fast. Stay focused, deliver clean, use your references, be smart about it, and let's knock this thing out. Let's get this thing done. I want to, I'll be absolutely honest, I want to see the answers. I'm looking forward to reading this. I am genuinely interested to see how you handle the market segmentation because I know this data set, but I've never run a market segmentation on it. That wasn't what I was commissioned to do. So I want to see what you've got to say. I'm looking forward to reading it. Let's make it fun. Let's make it interesting. And let's knock this thing out. All right? Done.